something you know. <laughs> you know what we're going to talk about today. Listen, we don't got no detention, no other subjects. Just heard the bell ring, classes in session. Just, just heard the bell ring, classes in session. Just, just heard the bell ring, classes in session. Now I'm gonna be die, about to teach you all a lesson, huh? Ain't no telling what we gonna do. So I was front, pay attention, this is home room. Welcome back, classmates. Yes, welcome back to the home room, the home room podcast. Present is now. I'm your boy Bryce, what's good? Something you know, <laughs> you know what we're gonna talk about today. Listen, we don't got no detention, no other subjects. This is the special way too early review of the MC himself, the best to do it. We've been waiting five years, ladies and gentlemen. Kendrick Lamar, Mr. Morale, and the Big Steppers. Yes. Yes, the GOAT. Like we said, the, the, the best to ever do it. The best MC to ever do it. Um, a long five years, a long, 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 long five years. We've been waiting, y'all, for a special episode. So if we got to put a class to it, obviously, it's music class, whole class, all the whole day, the whole school day, we focused on music class. Um, whole school listen, day. Man, let's just, let's just hop into it, man. What What's your first impression of the album, dog? Let's just get right into it. So for me, my first impression, um, you know, oh, I'm gonna ask you a question first, right? Because you know, right. It, like this album is loaded. You want to talk about so many things, but my first impression of the album, like I said, it's pretty early, so it's it's a great album. I don't yet, because I'm a, well, I I don't yet say it's past any of the Good Kid, Man City, the Dams, or the Sister Butterfly, but um. Is really good. I mean, there's some topics that we're going to talk about that just he was just tackling that I mean, we may have heard a little bit, you know, from other rappers, but he really just went full head first and just said, you know, this is what we need to uh, talk about and this is what we're going to address. So, so. yeah, I'm right there with you. Um, obviously, again, we know it's the way too early review of the album, hasn't even been out a week. Um, but my first impression was about time. In a way, because again, as you know, we love Ken, we love Kendra, we love K Dot. And so the little sprinkles we got of him, like um doing the Black Panther album and, and other you know, other little things he was doing um short of a full album were kind of like, okay, like it's something, but like we want something from you. Um, and so my first impression was just like finally we got something from him. And funny enough, like I was just laying in my bed, lights off, headphones in, just just soaking in the album and i was just like he's really like you said he's tackling subjects that a lot of rappers honestly a lot of people wouldn't even tackle in in their personal yeah. lives let alone put it on something on such a public platform like an album where he knows millions are going to hear it so yeah my first thought was about time and wow the the subjects and the topics that he's tackling and he chose to talk about on his album are to make you and make you go wow, make you go wow. Yeah, because I remember that night when it came out, me and you was talking, and you told me because you had to work in the morning, she wasn't gonna listen to it. And I told you I was gonna stay up and listen to it. Grant, before reverse happened, you stayed up and you end up listening to it. I woke up at like two forty six. Well, other people probably would have stayed sleeping. I got myself up and, and I'm, I put. I'm gonna just tell people this now. Um, I think it's public service announcement. I need people to understand time zones. Okay, we got oh. Eastern, Central, Mountain, and Pacific. For those of y'all, I guess I could say it. I'm in. A, I'm I've in never a, even heard of. Dude, you're not the only one that says that, and y'all, we gonna get back to K dot. But you're not the only one who said that, bro. So many people said, "What is Mountain Time?" So they thought it went from Central to Pacific. There's a whole nother hour in the middle. It's called Mountain Time. But for y'all that don't know, I'm in. I'm in Central Time right now, and I get on the clock. Anywhere between three fifteen and three thirty a.m. So my hours are very precious. So when I gave up that time, it, it hit like so. Like for you, K Dot album released at like midnight. For me, it was eleven p.m. So eleven p.m. hit, and I'm like, you know what? I'm up. I'm about to. I'm about to listen to Kendra for this next hour, fifteen hour thirty. I listen to the album. It's about twelve thirty. I fall asleep. Right. 
then my good brother and my good co-host here calls me. In his state, it's 347. 347. My state is 247. And so my man's robbed me of about like 20 minutes of sleep, but it's all good though. I let it go because we was up listening to K dot, so it's okay. But yeah, know your time zones, people, please. But yeah. Um okay, so first impression, again, we both kind of just were like, thank God he dropped something. And also the topics were like really wild. With that being said, what um what are your top three right now? What are your top three? So mine would be count me out, die hard. And I'ma go with I'm gonna go with this I just kinda like listening to probably more, but because of it, I'm gonna say Auntie Diaries. See, I was not expecting those three from you at all. I was expecting Auntie Diaries. I was not expecting, um, I was not expecting Die Hard. I was not. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that was the first song on the album that was really like, okay, but get some radio play, and like yeah. you know, Kendrick can hit you a lot of, can hit you with a lot of, with a lot of, just hit you a lot with a lot of info, you know. So that was the first time I was like, okay, I'm gonna try to groove, get a little easy before I get you the next dose of this. So I like that blast we're getting that. Um, yeah, I see what her name is, but there's also um, there's some other people on the on the um, another it was, feature, but it was just like, yeah, my phone ain't showing it because I'm because I'm recording from my phone. So I'll look it up, I'll but look. her name was her name is it's not dead, her name is Amanda Reefer. Die Hard, Man, okay, Amanda yeah, Reefer. so it was just a good song. Um, I think that's especially like when you work with people like Kendrick, just like saying like Kobe, he gonna make you go into a different bag. Just like Kanye did with um all the people on Donda, like they were rapping yes. differently. Yeah. But just it's one of the different things that they normally do. So um even hearing Black talk about his girl London, like that was that was pretty uh pretty cool. Um Count Me Out, I mean that's just a vibe, you know, like so much I saw so shit. many people I, I saw I saw that on so many people's Instagram stories. Count me out, count me out, love me. Count. I saw that on so many people's stories, dog. So you're not alone. Oh, for real? Like yeah. this, 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 these last couple of days? Um, I mean, let me like not, I ain't gonna say a lot, but I, I mean, for as much as I'm on Instagram, I was, or for as little as I'm on Instagram, the number of times I saw it to me, I was like, dang, people really rocking with at least like that, the message of that song. Yeah, I just, I just didn't know, I just didn't know if, uh, I mean, I, I, a lot of, of course, Kendrick got a lot of fans. It's like number one right now on Apple iTunes and all that stuff, but. I just, you know, you always gonna see the haters way more than anything else, right? Like, there's people who haven't listened to the album yet hating. There's one person in particular who knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but who is like, it? Who is it? Who are is it? Hey, hey, hey. Maybe a former member, a former former uh, participant. Maybe some blood in I know what you're talking about. <laughs> it's like I wouldn't say nothing if I didn't know nothing. But it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Me and Bro got something in common. Um, yeah, I know. <laughs> hey man, but listen, dude. It's like, yeah, I you just give it a listen, and like I know, just like when CLB come out, when Donna come out, everybody the first time you hear it, you may not like really know what's going on. You need to let that thing marinate. Like we still need to let this marinate. It's gonna go up more. So, uh, but count me out. And if Father Time, I really like the intro because one thing about this album is I don't I like everything. I'm not the biggest fan of all these little 30 second intros. We win or no. Like, but the intro for Father Time was dope. I even like the, the intro for We Call Together, but Father Time is a good message, cool. And it's like someone talking about a lot, a lot of rappers on Hottie Five. But now you talk about you if you do have your father, like some of the hardships, you know, because your father at the end of the day just wants you to be a strong man that can hold it down for your family in the future. So even though he may have been talking to you in a place where you didn't need, we're just trying to help uplift him. So I think we can all who have fathers relate to that in some sense. So it was it was a good song too. Yes, man, I'm gonna just touch on that real quick. Like for real. People think just because your father's in your life, everything's smooth similar. Like, no, that is, and I'm not, and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna say this as a disclaimer. I, there's no way, there's no way on this on God's green earth that I would have rather had my life that I'd rather live my life without my father, my pops. You know what I'm saying? That's not what I'm saying, without my father. Yeah. But there comes 
there's a different pressure. And I say pressure, I say that word very, very lightly, very, very lightly. But there's a different pressure when you have your father in your life because it's like you want to make sure, and he's actually doing what he's supposed to do. You want to make sure that, that, that he's proud of you, that you're doing um, everything you can to, to make him proud of you. Not that he told you, hey, this is what you need to do to make me proud. He's, he's going to love you regardless, at least in my situation. But it's like, dang, I got this added pressure. And I really, I rock with Kendrick on that. Because even if even if it might go without saying, you just feel like this is what I got to do to make my pops proud, da 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 And then in Kendrick's case, his dad was making it very, very clear, very known. Hey, man, this is what I expect of you, da 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 Man, and it, um, um, shoot, we can get into it, I guess. One of my favorite parts of the I song. I mean, real quick, that. I want to real quick, too, like, like, like your dad to me is like my first drill sergeant, right? Like, like if you don't have your dad, you know, you're like, okay, well, you have to go do that. But your dad's one thing to make your bed. You got this thing, you got this thing, you got this thing. Mm-hmm. He 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 kicking you, getting you right. And like some people, are like man, I wish he went on my back. But then guess what? Like it's it's really the blessing though. So yeah, as, huge, as you were saying, huge blessing. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know what? What I was finna say, I'll get into it later. I'll get into it later. Uh, right. I guess. <laughs> Not because, like, like I said, we're gonna be on it. We're gonna be on this thing for a little minute talking. So, um, I guess my three, not I guess my three, my number one for sure. No argument, no no competition. Even though it's not gonna be the most played song, probably on anyone else's playlist other than mine, is Mirror. I absolutely love Mirror. The, um, he says, "I chose me. I'm sorry." Um, when he's talking about. Sorry, I didn't save the world, my friend. I was too busy building mine again. That I, I felt that. I felt that so much. Cause it's like when you have big aspirations either of yourself or other people have huge aspirations and expectations of you, you 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 often can lose yourself in all of that. And it sounds like that's what happened to Kendrick. He lost himself. He wasn't taking care of himself. And he had to kind of say, okay, world, I can't do nothing for you until I do for me. Because if I'm not whole, if I'm not 100%, I'm, you're only going to get pieces and parts of me. And they're most likely going to be broken and unhealed parts and pieces of me that I don't want you to have. That are, you know, it's not going to fulfill my purpose of me being on this earth. So I rock with that so much. Um, what'd you say? Especially, I mean, I can't remember what his last song was. Big in my city, but like um, Duckworth, uh, mortal man, like he gonna give you a solid outro, bro. I literally, I was, I noticed that I was like, man, his outros are always fire. And I will say, the most, mm, I don't know, because Compton was his last song on Good Kid, Mad City. That's not necessarily okay. the same vibe as as Duckworth, mm-hmm. Mortal Man. I could probably relate. Mm, maybe sing about me, and more, and maybe dying of thirst. More so. Maybe uh, outro. The huh? Ooh. That wasn't his outro. outro? Man, like dying of thirst is probably more on par with his outros of his other albums, like the Duckworths and the the Mortal Man's and the Mirrors. Um, and then um, even on Mirror Steel, every time he says "I chose me," I'm sorry. I feel like he's I feel he's apologizing for different ways. So like the first time, um, I got remember the lyrics. Hold up. Um, he's just talking. I feel like he's just he's apologizing for being himself, or for choosing himself to like different people, different situations. Like I feel like in one way he's apologizing to his wife or to his fiance for choosing like his passion, his desires over her, and then he's apologizing. I think to us as fans because he had to choose himself when he's talking about getting 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 help and counseling is not easy. But he's like, I'm sorry, y'all, but I had to choose me in order to, again, give y'all what I wanted to give y'all. And so it's like, he's apologizing, but then he's also saying like, yo, I had to do this for me, for my fiance, for my family, and for y'all, in a sense. Um, shoot, that was just one song. Um, I love Purple Hearts as well. I think on those, I just love the name, because in the military, shouts out to my brother here, um, correct me if I'm wrong. Purple Hearts are given to wounded soldiers, correct? Wounded soldiers in combat or if they die, yeah. Okay. 
I think again, he if you listen to each uh you listen to Kendrick's verse, Summer Walker's verse, and uh oh who was it? Ghostface Killer's verse, each of them are talking about some some way, shape, or form they were hurt. Um Kendrick's talking about how like he's not in the music business, he's in the human business because of stuff he's dealt with with like women and being in the music business. Summer Walker's talking about like personal relationships, and then Ghostface Killer is even talking about how he hurt people and how he's kind of battling um, and, and, and struggling and wrestling in his relationship with God. So I feel like they're all coming from a, from a place of hurt, of being wounded, but they're also trying to heal and kind of work themselves through it, which is why I really love that song and that title. Um, and cut me off if you got something to say. But, um, and then also with um, Auntie Diaries, I rock with you 100%, bro. That is a very, very deep song. Um, especially why like, even though it's 2022, the stigma that homosexuality and, and, and transgender still have in the black community, um, for him for to for Kendrick to be a, a a masculine, you know, a black masculine male to go to go into that and really talk deep about it, I loved it. Um, whether or not you agree with people's decisions and what they choose to do with their lives. Um he, he, he continued to view to view his auntie and his cousin as humans, which is major. So, yeah, I love it. And I, I mean, one huge thing I've, I've always said, too, is like, I've always said the F-bomb is just as bad as other people saying the N-word. Mm -hmm. So I just like this, that song addressed that and said, like, they can't say that. We definitely can't say that because it's just like, I don't want to use a day to tell us I'm like punching down or like, you know what I'm saying? But just like keep on hurting a, a, a minority. So right. just, I mean, at the end of the day, the biggest thing you do is like love somebody. So even if you, even if your beliefs don't agree or nothing like that, you should not try to uh, make someone feel less of what they are. Just try to work with them and understand them and like show love. So that's huge. That's huge. Yeah. But um, yeah. Yeah. Oh. And those two those are our top three. So we had one similar, but as you see, we have last song to pick from. And I wasn't, I, I really did not expect you to pick. I understand now why you picked Die Hard, but I was not expecting Die Hard to be in your top three at all. See, look, Die Hard, it just, I like Black. It's a, like, it's a vibe. Yeah. It's yeah. a vibe. I mean, that's just, it's, yeah, yeah, it, 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 it could change tomorrow, but it could change tonight without it doing some more. So, my top three. But right now, that's what it is. Yeah. Um, before we even get, well, actually, let's get to the next question. Let's get to the next question. And that question is uh, why do you think it took five years? Man. Let me say this first, because I'm, I'm going to intro this. I'm going to say what I got to say about how I see, because, you know, Kendrick is my boy. Yeah. And my, what I'm going to say now is going to answer the five year question. Right? So the hard part five, a huge fan of Hard Part Four, you know. So I love, I, I love all the hearts. So I knew when I see Hard Part Five, I said it's about to go crazy. Because even if you're, if you really know Kendrick Boy, you know he always gives you a heart before any album. So I just, I was waiting, I'm like, man, we're we gonna get that because we was getting close. But um, you know, the first verse of the heart is like for people who've been criminalized, you know. And like, I mean, if you watch like the Million Dollars with the Game podcast, like Wild and Gilly just talk about how much like you think you being a real. When you say, well, but you think you're being real and that can cost you like you your baby mama is out here that's when another dude probably your own dude you know what i'm saying because but you did this all because you want to be real so i like the first verse talking about like the trial of being incarcerated mm -hmm. and the next verse was male celebrities who the media has scrutinized it was them giving themselves a little bit more of their own um and their own message so we had their uh, just small Kanye West and Will Smith, and then I think he made and OJ. OJ. So when I seen that part, I'm telling you, this is this my first time watching the video. I told myself because in 2020, when we both when we lost both, and I know what I said in the podcast on, on an earlier episode, but I said how could Kendrick see both Kobe and Nipsey die, and he ain't said nothing. I kept saying I'm like bro because he was real close personally with, with Nipsey. But then him and Kobe was cool. They did that. They did something for complex. They had an interview. So I knew he he had a lot of respect for Kobe. He was at his last game. I remember all that. So I was like, he ain't gonna say nothing. 
As soon as I saw the face morphing, I said, I promise you, I know he going to do Kobe and Nancy. And when he did, I was like, yeah, I knew it was coming. So that was cool. Um, another person, though, once I heard the hard part five, once I watched, listened to it a couple more times, I, saw, I, I knew that from the first part. But when I was listening to it a couple of times, when we went to L.A. in 2019, that was during the time that Netflix had put out this special Surviving R. Kelly. R. Kelly, as a human being, he done done some terrible stuff. But in all honesty, his music, he got like he's one of the greatest R and B singers of all time. So, you know, a lot of a lot of other artists were very easy to separate their music, you know, do do things like that. I told myself after watching Hot Five Five Couple Times, I said, with verse two being about people who are really scrutinized by the media. I feel there's a part of Kendrick that really, really, really wanted to do R. Kelly's face on there. But he just felt like the media was really gonna get him. Like he was already getting, he was already working with like Nipsey, you know, people already like, okay, we don't know if we rock with that. But if you put R. Kelly too, they really might went crazy. But he went ahead and on the album had two references to R. Kelly. One on We Cry Together and then the other one to got Mr. Morale. So it was just like it was interesting. Um he just did that. So, I mean, all this was through time, like 2019, 2020, then the whole COVID happened. So I think that's what took it time. I mean, also just got a new sound. He got a whole new sound now, which some people don't even like his voice initially, which, I mean, I'm cool. I like it. But it's just, he was just doing new things, especially with his, his cousin, Baby Keen. Um, his sound is different. So it just he had to find a new thing. He never wants to give you the same thing. He wants to give you a whole new vibe. And that's what he did for sure. Yeah, no, I'm hundred percent. You with the theories, man, and you with the with the connections. I mean, you gonna you gonna have everything. Yes, and I was like, my bad, because I remember I was talking about 2019, because I knew our was gonna come in because because I didn't, I said why when we was in LA, our our Uber driver was a lady, and she was talking about how Kendrick was getting mad at people. He did something I can't remember exactly what it was, but the Uber driver wouldn't know, but. At that moment, I was like, dang, Kendrick Loki, he rocks R. Kelly. So that's what made me think about that. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah. No, I, I, again, I echo everything you said. In terms of like why it took five years, um, I think the answer, my, uh, one of my guys had commented on, you know, I, the day the album dropped, one of my most active days on Instagram, just posting stuff after, um, just, just posting Kendrick this, Kendrick that. Um, one of my guys commented on it and was like, why do you think it took so long? And he had only heard the outro. He was going back and listening to the to the song or to the to that project. And I was like, honestly, bro, the answer's in the answers in the album. Again, with the with him being so transparent, and we'll get to that in a second. But just with him again being willing to talk about what he talked about, I think he was telling us, like, yo, this is everything I've been dealing with since y'all got down. This is what I've been dealing with. And it's taken me this long um, to really had writer's block for two. He did. He said he had writer's block for two years. So it's take. He's like, y'all, it's taking me this long to get all of this out and to get out in a way where I'm ready to present it to y'all. Um, and like, and I, when you really think about it, like, didn't he? Because he lost his father during this time, did he not? I think he did. Because like, what's his time on father time? He said something. I think he lost his father. I was trying to figure out. So, lost my father, um, dealing with issues New kid. with his children, dealing with issues with his fiance. Um, on top of he, he, he was in the same pandemic we were in, lost Kobe, lost Nip, which meant more than him, huh? So, he got COVID because he talked about Kyrie. So, you know, <laughs> dealing with, oh, it sure did. So, you know, again, it's just like any, anything else. He, he reminds us more than a lot of other artists that he is human. And so he has to deal with stuff too. He has to um, wrestle with, with, with emotions and internal feelings that we all have to deal with. So uh, the only difference is that he's willing to, once he figures it out, he's willing to put it out in a project and kind of let us in. So, yeah. And now that we have this project, it makes so much sense why it took him so long. And I'm actually kind of thankful that he waited because had he given us anything earlier, it probably wouldn't have hit like it's hitting, you know? So yeah, he may give us some he may give us some radio hits, which we may we would have appreciated like you know the time being, but he said, No, nah, I wanna give you something that's really gonna stick. And this this ain't going nowhere. Again, 
too early to rank like where it ranks with other albums, but it it's a good it's a good work. It's it is a good project, and it's a deep project. It really it really cuts deep, especially if you've gone through some of the things that he's been dealing with here. And I did tweet out it was the album of the century, but I was just playing. I didn't want no one to come kill me. So you know, you, you was you was asking for it. You was asking for it. I don't know, man. I again, yeah. it's too early. I don't even know if I can put this above other Kendrick albums yet. You know, I don't know. You were joking, but because he's got so much good. Oh, he's got so much heat, bro. So, but would you say this is his most transparent album to date? Um, maybe. I mean, probably. But like, I mean, I think about like a swim butterfly. He talks about being a hypocrite. How he killed a black man, you know what I'm saying? When he's like, when he's talking about all this stuff, like, we're gonna be all right. But no, but then, like, my favorite, my, probably my favorite song by Kendrick ever, You, where he admits he, he was suicidal at one point in his life. You know what I'm saying? And that's tough, that's tough to, like, really admit. But I mean, we had to, we had to play To Come Butterfly back, too. So, you yeah. know, you don't really want to say that. Yeah, and even if, like, worried about, like, he gonna make it to heaven, you know, because, like, like, he was tested by that man. Um, who had no? Who just won the dollar? Who just won a dollar? Oh y'all, oh y'all, J Cole and Drake fan. <laughs> we love J Cole and Drake over here. We love, we love both of them. We love all three of them. You don't got not. You don't have to just like one. You can like all three. You don't. You got. You got to recognize the three headed monster. You got to. Yeah, got to. Got to recognize the three headed monster. But you also have to recognize which head is above the other two heads. Understood. You feel me? But okay, anyway. let's kind of let's dive deeper into like how transparent he was because it's like, dude, people can't people can't be transparent in their regular lives. First off, right. so then and it's like you have to not assume. I mean, obviously we know, but like he was transparent with you know people close in his life before he obviously put all this you know put the album together. Like being transparent with. With his girl about his infidelity, being transparent about how he it doesn't it doesn't sound like he wanted to go to counseling at first. I forgot which song it was, yeah. but at the beginning he's like, I don't need no counseling. I'm this, this, and that. Father time. It's on father yeah. time. Like he, he was like, I don't want to go to counseling. And it's like, how important was the transparency in terms of like the way this album hit? How important was the transparency, would you say? I, I think that was the biggest thing. I think, I mean, look at like N95 to me, right? Where we all we all try to cover our authentic selves with having nice clothes, saying the right thing, being politically correct, doing all these things. So he says, when you take off all that, when you take off all that, because like, especially like if you're if you're not embracing your true self and you're just covering yourself with all this stuff, who are you really? When you take it all off. Oh, you know, you ugly as you know what you said, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's just like really saying you when you really em embrace who you are, you can become this beautiful being that like no one can tell you nothing, you don't care. And like you really like really in in one with whatever with God, you know what I'm saying? But like, that was a transparent moment. Um let me see like other moments where I thought it was transparent. I mean, it was. I mean, it was like this. I mean, the auntie's diary was crazy. You know, he in the he in the church when when Demetrius is now Marianne, and he's telling the preacher like, "Should we not love thy neighbor?" Like, I know what the book says, but should we not love thy neighbor? So that's what I mean. For real, like, there's some of them things like that. Uh, hard topic, but I think it was really good. It was really good. I mean, it speaks to it. Man, we could literally talk about this for hours, but you can't get when you're transparent. It allows you to be. And first of all, it will, it will open up others. It will open up a lane for others to be transparent who may not have felt comfortable doing it yet. Um, mm. Because again, when we when we have this veil up and it's like I'm trying to look like N95, I'm trying to look perfect, I'm trying to look like this. I got my mask up, so you don't know who I am. It's gonna be hard for me to come to you and be like, yo, this is where I fall short, because it don't look like you falling at all. But when I see, okay, you fall there, hmm, maybe I can let you know that I fall over here. Um, and it's like, 
and again, whether you whether or not you believe in God, like for me, obviously I'm I'm rocking with, with Jesus. But for anyone else who believes in something else, or maybe they don't believe in anything, and they like go to a counselor or a friend or a family or whoever. If you can't be transparent with whoever you're going to, whatever real problems you have will never be solved. Never. If if I you know what I'm saying I mean, if I come at you with a I don't know, if I come at you with a broken arm, but I'm over here telling you I got a paper cut. We're never gonna heal the arm. Hey. Yeah. So. So I mean, but let's talk about this too, right? It's like the, the songs like N95. You know, we are still technically in a pandemic. I think maybe of some sort. Somebody but, said it's an endemic now, but we in a pandemic. Yeah. Right. So, but think about it. When our jobs told us for the first time everybody can take their mask off, how many people did you have that Kendrick line right from to? Like dang, I I thought I, I imagine you had some straight teeth or you had some down there, but you definitely we got gaps out here, boy. <laughs> but that, I mean, it's, 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 it's people fear, you know. Like when that N95 mask came off, all imagination became reality. So whatever you thought it was, is something totally different. So N95 for sure. Uh, and it's and then um, mother, oh, mother are sober. You know what I'm saying? That was a good one too. Mm. Like just because because baby King. I guess his mom was like addicted to drugs, so like he was just like letting her know like his son is is doing well because she passed away. Mm-hmm. And then, I mean he, I mean all the talk for for his wife too, Whitney. You know, I mean Drake. I mean I just said Kendrick was giving us a lot. Like he was, he even let us know his wife's name this time. Mm-hmm. So we all, I think everyone just says Whitney, 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 Whitney. You know, but it's, he, it's, us... uh, he did it's definitely transparent. He gave him so much. He gave him so much. Why do you think, and I guess we kind of touched on it a little bit, but I guess I'll ask just straight up. Why is it so difficult for people to be transparent? I mean, it's difficult because we all want to go places in life. We all want to do things on this earth. That's the thing, because it's, it's only reason why we do things, only reason why we, it's hard to be transparent is because of earthly matters. Because if we didn't care about, if it was all about searching for the, uh, the greater gifts, which is like, thing, we wouldn't care, like, we wouldn't care. We would just do things of how we know. But we want to. We want to become top CEOs. We want to become doctors. We want to do all these things. So people have to. We have to get the approval of many. We have to. We have to. We want to be high ranking. So for that, we have to appease to certain people. We cannot be too radical. Only Kanye West can get away with it. Everybody else, you know, you got to figure out how to do. It, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> because of that, one wants to be careful. They want to tread lightly. So yeah, that's definitely it. Mm. Like you said, man, it's the, it's the acceptance and wanting to be accepted, one, not wanting to be the outcast, not wanting to be looked at as the weird one. And like, so that's why you have a lot of like, I don't know, like, a lot of silent epidemics, a lot of things that, that a lot of people are really dealing with. But since nobody's willing to say they're dealing with it, we can all be in the same room, sick as a dog, and all claiming that we're healthy. Because nobody wants to look sick. But it's like if one person would just admit, hey, I'm sick, everyone else might say, you know what? I'm sick too. Let's all go get healthy together. That's like in college when, you know, we all in the classroom, the teacher asks, y'all getting it? Everyone, there's that one person say, sir, I don't get it. And everybody like, <laughs> you know, everybody, it takes one person to finally say, look, you're talking a lot right now, Dr. So and so. We, we we still back there, okay? Mm-hmm. But like it's just yeah. It's a shame. It's a, it would take it would take the whole class to fail for the transparency to come out. It would take, like you said, say that one yeah. that one kid didn't raise a hand and say, "Hey, I don't get this." Now it's Friday or whatever day. It's test day. It would take the whole class to fail for the teacher to have to look and be like, "Okay, y'all was lying. Nobody nobody gets it. Nobody gets it." It's, and even then, it's a matter of now you fitting in though. Now failing is still fitting in. So the transparency still was never truly done. It was just brought out because okay, well, all right, I know everybody failed now. Okay, yeah, I don't get it. Yeah, and and then it's like okay, did the previous classes fail too? Okay, I mean, I guess it's just normal to fail. Like okay, let me just keep moving instead of like you know you really need to check check somebody. You know, and we're not saying go go crazy, but you need to like hey, you know, I need help. Yeah, so it, it definitely, definitely crazy. Yeah, thanks. I've already asked you this, but I'm gonna ask you again. Is this Kendrick's last album? 
We know it's his last with TDE, but is this his last album? Right. So one more time, we got to, we got to, we know the fact that his last album with TDE. I definitely don't think it's his last album because uh, first off, your if not him, your favorite rapper of all time, Lil Wayne. He told us Car Five was gonna be his last album, and this man still giving his album. And I don't game, Yeah, <laughs> the game told us documentary two was gonna be his last album. He done made like three albums since. Like, a rap is not like basketball where when you're physically done, we're kicking you off the team. Like, you're done. You, you have no choice. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to rap, can you still speak? Can you still put <laughs> words together? You're going to keep doing this till it's over. You feel know I me? Mean? Like, can you still speak? Me, like, if 50 Cent wanted to, he could go like, man, I want to make a little album real quick. It's like... If you're bored, you're just going to do what you normally do. You're going to keep making music. So, I, I mean, Kendrick can't be done. He, he ain't done. I mean, like, J. Cole. J. Cole said he was done. He said, okay, I guess we're still in. I'm about to say, he's he still might, good. I, well, he's still making music, but he's not releasing any albums. Yeah, I know, but I I know he ain't done. If Kendrick just put this out, like, like when someone <laughs> like this comes out, he'll get fueled up. You know what I'm saying? He's not done. J. Cole, in two years, this man gonna have dreads longer than Bob Marley putting out music, bro. <laughs> I agree. I think yeah. I I don't think he's done. I don't know now. Again, I don't know when we'll get another one. I don't think it'll be this long because it sounds like he's done. I'm gonna say majority. It sounds like he's done a lot of healing, and so he's in a better place now. So hopefully it won't take him as long to give us another project. You know, like I think he's in a, it seemed like he's in a much better place than he was. Um, then like the time, you know, leading up to, to this album. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. And like, I mean, at the end of the day, I remember like, Kendrick is a human just like me and you. He had a talent. You just want to let, you don't, you don't want the millions? Like, you don't want to go, you don't want to make millions of dollars? You're going to make music. Only person, unless you're under 8,000. Or Kyrie Irving, who said, "Yeah, I don't really want to do that." Everybody else, we trying to make some money. So, and I'm, I don't even then, bro, you you know they they find loophole, they find ways to still make their bread, even if they're not making music yeah, or dribbling sure. a basketball, they find a way to get their money. Yeah, I mean they definitely do it, but but it's just like especially off of your original love, what got you here, like because when you're making music, I think like one of the things you look forward to is going on tour, right? Yeah. When you look out, thirty thousand people. Know the words. You don't even have to rap no more. You, you stop. You stop rapping. You just hear everybody going you know like this. That, you go know like this. That's a feeling. I know that's a feeling right there. So you, yeah, you don't want to stop. You don't want to stop that. I feel that. I feel that. I feel that. Man. I won't ask it. I wait. I wait. I wait. What final thoughts you got on the album, or what else do you want to add? Um, I am excited because I feel like one of the things that Kendrick wanted to do with PG Lang was to create a lot more visuals. Um, he he start like he started off really to me with Baby Keem album. He was getting us a lot of visuals, family ties, all that. He's got a new artist. He's he's gonna be working on that. But I mean, the first real visual that he did under his name for for a song he did was Part Part Five. I mean, that was a wonderful start, you know what I'm saying? Yes. So I'm really excited to see all the visuals he's going to be making for this album. I think uh, he just put out the video for N95, you know? Um, it was, and that, in the parts of that video, we've seen for like years, like a year ago, like him on the phone, like that had been a meme. And even there, there was like, I think Complex, somebody got footage of him when he was, over the water and stuff. So all this stuff was like he'd been doing it for a while. So I, I think I think he's got a lot in his bag. But I'm 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 excited to see the visuals. I'm excited for both of us to uh, buy these shoes so we don't have to buy the other person the shoes by these converse. But I mean, I'm just excited, man. And then like Marquise, we, I mean we're gonna to Marquise tour. We're going to... What'd you say? I said shout out to Marquise for the loophole. Yeah, shout out to Marquise for the loophole. Shout out to Marquise here. We wish he was on here today. Miss you. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Again, I'm just very appreciative of the transparency. 
I think if more people were just transparent, because you know, obviously the difference between transparent and honest, honest is when I ask you a question, you tell me the truth. Transparency is you give me the truth, unprovoked. And more transparency in the I, I feel message, message. I mean, yeah, come on. We know that's his definition. That's his definition, baby. Um I got you, I got you. like I said, it's it's much easier to be honest because again, you, you're kind of forced, not forced, but it's put in front of you versus transparency is like, yo, I, I'm coming to you and saying, hey, this was up, this is what I did. So um, I really just appreciate his willingness to just let us in and 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 show us like, yo, I'm a human. Yeah, I'm a superstar, you know, artist, whatever, but I breathe the same oxygen you breathe and I'm I'm living in the same world you live in. So yeah, just my final, I'm just very, very appreciative of how open and transparent he really was on this album. And definitely and let's make one more reference to the uh to the Drake stands because look first off two people who love Drake's music when on Father Time when he spoke about Kanye and Drake he really gave them credit he did he gave he, them yes yes he gave them credit because he said he was not mature enough to heal like them and that is a thing like like not having beefs having like not being cool people that's not that's not solid honestly like you want to get to a point where okay y'all don't gotta be buddy buddy on friends even but just to know there's peace because like it, it takes a lot of energy to be looking over your shoulder every time you go somewhere especially when these two people are going to be in the same locations all the time you know if y'all are both successful y'all gonna be a grammy even though y'all, people don't show up but like, you're gonna be in all these different places at the same time it's best to you know Make amends. So, that's yeah. me. you know, Twitter was going crazy. Oh, he mentioned Kanye. He name dropped Drake. Y'all not even listening to the music. Y'all don't even know what he said. That's what I'm saying. And like, and like, I think some people they even just, you know, on Apple Music, like you can get the lyrics, and like it'll just show the lyrics, like that one part highlighted. But then if you go right under that, he gave the he gave the acknowledgement. But you too busy talking about how he said he was confused. Yes, because we because. Just like y'all, y'all was confused too when they was back. Y'all was confused. Some of y'all was mad when yeah. uh, when they got back to school. So like, it was normal for you to be confused. Like y'all was like, all this, I got this, y'all got Duffy Freestyle, y'all got Life at a Party, y'all got 7 a.m. on Bridal Pass or whatever Bridal Pass, and y'all cool. But it took it took you now Jay Prince and uh, all that. But that's how it should be. That's 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 acknowledgement. That's and, and some people are gonna say you know it's a facade, but I would like if there's any facade, let the facade be in favor of there being peace. You know, yeah. instead of y'all putting a facade beef and you know so exactly. So yeah, um, that's all we got for this episode. Um, unless you got any final thoughts, um, I I know it was just one subject, y'all, but I. I was looking forward to this episode so much just to talk about the album, um, just to give our thoughts, hear each other's thoughts. Um, and y'all comment, tell us down uh, in the comments below, add us, tell us your favorite song, why, um, where do you rank it with Kendrick's album? Is it his last? Just just talk to us, what do y'all feel? Are you a Kendrick fan? Did this make you a Kendrick fan? Are you not a Kendrick fan? Like, just talk to us, holla at us, let us know. It felt like forever since we shot. It felt like forever since we heard from Kendrick. We kept, I for sure kept guessing based off of like events he was doing. I was like, oh, so he's gonna be Super Bowl. He's definitely gonna put the album out so he can say something Super Bowl. Then there was something like in November or something. I thought he was gonna have the album. We were supposed out. to go to Vegas but, from, but what was it called? Yeah, it's for, and I'm not wrong now, but something like that. So I was like, oh yeah, he's gonna have the album out. But I guess he was still, you know, for all those people saying he was only going to play all right. Okay, now we got stuff. We got stuff, even though he got plenty before that. But yeah. we got some new stuff for you. Uh, yeah, we thank y'all for just watching. We just want to give y'all a quick one. Um, the way, 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 way too early review of the Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. Yeah. Just uh, giving to you from your, your favorite classmates, man. We love y'all. Uh... Thank y'all for rocking with us from the Home Room Podcast to the back of the class. Class dismissed.